Um, this is a sorry tale of a very trusting man who had the engine rebuilt on his car. They'd used a, it was a 4.2 E-type T2 plus 2. And they'd rebuilt the engine using a military 4.2 block, which, from what I remember, was fitted into the Fox and Ferret Scout cars. Unfortunately, after 3,000 miles, the number 5 piston liner let go, went down the block, smashed into a million pieces, did that to the piston, and also took the oil pump with it. He brought the engine to me together with a 420 engine that he owned, which I stripped to utilise the block to rebuild his engine. Um, the, the, the crankshaft and the cylinder head were supposedly completely refurbished and would be able to be fitted straight into the engine. Well, the crankshaft, he told me, had got the rear lip seal conversion done on it, but when I took it out of the engine, it hadn't. It had got a real rope seal in it. Not only that, but four of the main bearing journals had got evidence of water corrosion on the faces. Hadn't been polished, hadn't been reground, they'd simply polished and put it into the engine. That obviously has been reground to plus 10 thou on both main and big end journals, and the rear seal conversion has been done on it. The timing gears. The camshaft timing gears, one of them, hopefully you can see, has got part of the tooth missing, as has the intermediate gear. The, the timing chain dampers were of very poor quality, which hopefully you can see. This was obviously all replaced together with the new timing chains and the new timing chain tensioner. The cylinder head. When I came to dismantle the cylinder head, I discovered that the tappets were very difficult to get out. When I got them out, I found that, strangely, they'd used the smaller diameter, later tappet shims, which, are, which they decided to hold in place by squirting silicon into the original collars to hold the shims in place. Strangely, the, the silicon had held the tappets in place, which is what made them so difficult to get out. Also, they'd, they'd replaced the, the shims in the inlet side, which were the right diameter, but they'd still filled it with silicon. Very odd. The other thing that they'd done was because the valve seats were so badly recessed, they'd done the usual, let's grind some off the tappet shims to get the valve clearances. So, the cylinder of the head had new valve seats put in it and it also had the face skinned which hadn't been done in the first place. I don't understand why because only if it's say three thousandths of an inch that is what you should always do. The oil seal on the front of the crankshaft. The distance piece they'd used was an earlier type which when I started at Jaguar in 1971 we used to just throw away and put the later type one in. And that was a long time ago. They'd surface ground the outside of the distance piece, I presume, to take the groove out of it. But they'd left a little bit that they hadn't ground down. So when I measured it, there's eight fair difference. If that's not a way of building an oil leak into an engine, I don't know what is. When he had the engine rebuilt the second time, they discovered that there was a, he discovered that there was a bad noise from the front damper. When they took the engine apart, they discovered that the washer that holds the crankshaft damper bolt onto the damper had been over tightened to the point where the washer was completely shattered. I can only assume that they'd done that as a botch to try and prevent the, the damper from chattering. They'd never have done it because the cone that the Woodruff key fits into, the slot is very loose. It wouldn't have mattered how much they tried to tighten the damper up, they would not have taken the chattering out of the damper. Anyway, now let's go and fire it up.